Professor, um, it's good to see you on the show again. Uh, welcome. Um, Dr Jenny Harris uh, told MPs this morning that we're seeing probably the most significant threat we've seen since the start of the pandemic. Why are we only talking about Plan B? Um, well, um, we've had a lot of cases in Scotland, despite the regulations being tougher than England. That was with Delta. And Omicron is, uh, is doing quite well, as far as we know. I think all the areas in Scotland that uh, send in data have had at least one case. Most have had more than that, and some have had quite a lot. And, you know, Plan B is uh, not that much different from what was going before. And I think the big problem, the big problem is if you have a lockdown, you've got to have business support. You've got to have a furlough uh, system in place that basically keeps the businesses ticking over until, you know, we see exactly what Omicron is going to do, because there are uncertainties about how nasty Omicron is. There's a debate going on at the moment, which is not supported by very much evidence. You know, there's a bit of evidence from South Africa which says maybe it's not as nasty, but of course their population structure is quite different from ours. And there's other countries are saying, well, it may not be any worse, it may not be any better than, than Delta. And at the end of the day, um, well, basically at the end of a couple of weeks, Round about Christmas itself, or a little bit after, we will have much better data and we'll know really how dangerous Omicron is. I think there's a general consensus view is that even if it is not as nasty as Delta, that means that people will unfortunately be uh, put in intensive care and, and some people will, will die from the virus. Um, I, mean, I don't think there's really any dispute about that. The actual argument is about how big that impact is going to be. And basically, all the things that are being talked about at the moment, either in Scotland or in England, um, really are not going to really stop the virus. They're certainly not going to stop the virus in its tracks. They will just reduce the number of cases because what this virus has shown itself really, really good at is the super spreader events where people go into a clouded room, large numbers of people, particularly when there's heavy breathing going on, singing, shouting, drinking, all that kind of stuff. The virus really has a field day and infects lots of people, even if only one person has got the virus to start with. And even that person might not know they have it because a lot of the cases are, are asymptomatic. The big problem is, if does that virus then get into the uh, high-risk people? And that's people over the age of 60, roughly speaking, people who have uh, problems with their immune systems, and um, even now, you know, we know now that even pregnancy raises your risk quite substantially. And of course, we know that the booster is going to give you about 70, 75 percent protection on the basis of the information we have now. But that means, well, 30 percent of people might well have a very serious infection if they're in one of those high risk groups. So um, it's a very tricky time. It's a very tricky time. Professor Pennington, what would you say to those uh, distinguished scientists like uh, Angus Dugleish, like Professor Shinetra Gupta, who would say that the number of cases isn't important, it's the number of fatalities and hospitalizations, and the evidence is as it stands that those fatalities and hospitalizations are remaining very low. In that case, a high number of cases is actually a good thing because that's how you build immunity. Well, yes, um, that's the old sort of herd immunity argument that we had you know, at the beginning of last year, that let the virus rip. Most of the people are not going to come to any serious harm from it. They'll build up immunity and then the virus will have nowhere to go. And um, clearly, that, you know, there's, there's, that, that's not an argument entirely without merit. But on the other hand, um, the, the, the question that we really can't give an answer to right now today is how many people are going to have a serious in infection with this virus? Because, I mean, the data from South Africa, they, they have a much younger population there. So they have a very smaller, a, a smaller proportion of people who are in the high risk group because the, the one thing that really determines whether you're going to have a hard time is your age. And my own view, and it's always been there, is that the more virus there is buzzing around, the more likely the virus is to spill over into those high-risk groups, and then it all depends, really, 
on how strong their immune response is and has been, whether they've had the booster and whether that um, booster immunity is going to stop them basically having a serious infection. So, you know, the jury's out on that at the moment. Um, and, and that, of course, creates problems for everybody because people want to, they want to have an answer now. Uh, what's going to happen? Unfortunately, making predictions about this virus is just as difficult as it was about all the other variants. That it is until you have some data and some data that you can rely on. And basically, for the UK, that really means data from the UK. Uh, you can't say this or that is going to happen. It's it's very much a um, you know a, a matter for argument. And I suppose the policy that the government uh, in Westminster has adopted and also in Scotland as well, is that, well, uh, we, we can't afford to be cut short by this um, you know, uncertainty in, in the sense of things are worse than we feared um, or hoped. Um, so let's have a precautionary approach. Let's have some restrictions in, even if those restrictions themselves are not particularly draconian, let's have those in and, and basically hold the virus off and, until we can see really how nasty it is and and then we can either relax or continue or maybe even have stronger uh, regulations coming in if the virus is really showing itself to be nastier than we hope. I don't know if scientists um, deal in hunches, but I'll give this one a go. Is it your hunch that we are seeing the beginning of new restrictions or the end of new restrictions? I well, I, I think I would favour basically not the end of restrictions because this virus is doing extremely well, and I think for the next month or so, unfortunately, the virus has appeared just before Christmas, the worst possible time for for for, for um, any kind of development. Not just because of Christmas, but because of the weather getting colder. We know that respiratory viruses peak in January, so my guess is that we'll be very lucky to escape without more restrictions. 